What's the key to kind of weathering that and kind of waiting for your moments in games? Well, first sensing it on the ice. Um, there are times you need to kind of need to stop the bleeding or cut things off, and you just want to play as, in that time, as simple a game as you possibly can. Uh, just drop your your risk profile right down, so nothing through the middle, nothing that you can't control in terms of where the puck is. And then be patient in the game, not passive, just patient. Right side, second row. Yeah, Paul, uh, you know, we knew their power play was a strength, and your PK was a strength. You guys are six for six on the PK so far. Just the importance of, if you guys are taking hills, the fact that you are having able to neutralize their power play and the importance of that moving forward. Yeah, I, I think it's the, it's the, maybe right now the strength in the first two games, the strength of both teams has been their penalty kill. Like that, that's the one piece, and we scored last night on our power play, but it's the one piece that's been strong. Um, there haven't been long power play flurries where, where you're under siege. Um, they had a, they had a good sh one good shot off the flank last game, but the penalty kill on both teams has been outstanding. Left side, second row. Good morning, Coach. Um, on Barkov, we know what he can do defensively. He wins the Selkie, and he's generally looked at as that 200-foot player. But do you think classifying that him as that almost underrates him offensively? And, and we saw what he did last night, and kind of he can have the, has the ability to take over. Yeah, I, I think uh, if, you, if you go back to actually the goal we scored in here, we batted it out of the air, dove and kicked it over to the other side. Um, but it's, it's funny because I thought the same thing last year about Patrice Bergeron, and I think he's got five of them. So Parky's still got some time. Um, but we rarely talked about the fact he's over 1,000 points, I believe, and, and, and an incredible offensive player. That slot hole, he would find it better maybe than anybody. And it's interesting because rarely do we do that. We almost always kind of kind of spotlight the offense of a player. And um, usually if you're talking about a really good defensive player, that's just it. You know, he's, just, he's a grinder kind of in that old school mob, but Sasha's not. I mean, he's at the very high end of his game may actually be offensively, but he wins the sulky because he won't cheat that. He won't, he won't push that. He's never in behind the play. He's not, his, you know, he does what's right every time when he touches the puck or at least tries to. Paul, you, you've said after each game in this playoffs that there's more offense on the ice, that it hasn't happened yet, that it's been difficult. Do you get a sense that it's going to come, or is this what we've seen in the first two games, what we're going to get for however long this series? No, I, I think you're going to get flurries of it. I don't, both teams are pretty good defensive teams, right? Their gaps are good, their sticks are good, they have. And now, even if you were just an offensive team, it's the conference final, so everybody's blocking shots, everybody's doing all the hard things. So I think you're going to see uh, the game will break loose for five or six minutes. Because I, I, what I mean by that, it's just even going through last night for both teams, there's passes that are being missed or, or maybe at times even almost too safe a play. But, and, I, and I think that that will ebb and flow a little bit in game. And, and just to follow up, I wanted to ask you, you mentioned the other day that you were talking, in dealing with games, like you would, you said, "Oh, I'm doing mindfulness and, and I'm doing this and that," and, I, and I'm just curious your your mindset during the playoffs for the last two years has been pretty even keeled and humorous and and whatever else. I'm just I'm I'm curious if that's just your personality or if that's a learned trait that you've had to come up with to deal with this job. No, I, well, it's uh, a fair amount of changed the way I approached this job in the last two years for sure. Um, also, I mean, I, I come off the ice during the regular season like mad sometimes, right? And I've had a few you know, snarky press conferences where I'm being a jerk, but that's just the mood that I was in at the time. It's just true. But for the most part, like none of you played. It's not your fault if we lose. You didn't really help us if we win. So I'm not really mad at any of you when I come in here. And if you take a shot at me, well, okay, that's your job, like that's part of it. So I don't come in here angry. I also, you know, I have a responsibility to kind of lead certain in, in the tone and the mood of, of how, how we approach our day. And we, we, we do spend a lot of time talking about handling your day. So the game is gone and today we have something that we need to get done. There's recovery, there's travel and there's family time. So we want to live in this day. And then I'd like to be a bit of an example of the, 
The breathing stuff's just good because I drink too much coffee. It keeps the heart rate down. Uh, Paul, just uh, two questions. One follow-up on, on what Sean was asking you about. I, I've, I talked to a couple guys that had you in Carolina both times, and they said that the second time it felt like it was a different version of the same person. Yeah. <laughs> like, did, it, did, were you a different person from when you were the youngest coach in the league? And, and, oh, yeah. yeah. I, I had no idea what I was doing. Like, none. Right? I had two years head coaching experience in the Ontario Hockey League, and I wasn't ready to be an NHL assistant coach. And then in November, I became the head coach, so I was way in over my head. I was learning on the fly. The next time you come through, you know, I did eight years, and I think my first tour, we won a conference championship, but we were still pretty thin at the time. Um, and then, yeah, you come back, so we got a American Hockey League, yeah, you come back at 11 years pro instead of zero years pro, so you're completely different with that. And then... Another big inflection point was be coming here, um, a completely different perspective. I think early on, I would say that, that that's all I that's all I am was a, as a hockey coach and carry the wins and losses to every day. There was no separation of days. If you lost your your days were lousy until the next win, right? A better uh, appreciation for just the presence of handling every day. Now that would be the big change. That and I. As Jimmy once said to me in my first year, he said, the toughest part for you is just figuring out what door to walk into into each building. So I was starting from scratch, Matt. You know, how do I get into the door first? And you get some time on the clock, and then you, you know what door to walk in. Yeah, that's so funny. I was just telling uh, a couple of the guys, same thing as a young sports writer, how to get into a right. building. It was like the most intimidating thing. Right, and then you and then you got to write something, you got to put it out there. And then everybody's going to just, no different than me, yeah. everybody judges. I, I don't. I read some articles because some of them I really enjoy, and then the comments are just awesome to me. Right? Like, <laughs> I think I get ripped. You guys, I think, get it worse than we do because there's some people that, that just don't like what you write, and it's, it's, they're angry about it because they're like fans, right? Yeah. So if it's not the most positive article about their home team, you guys suck. Yeah. So you know what? We're all yeah. doing the same thing. Yep. When you walk in your first day, you, you got a lot to learn. Yeah, I completely relate to that. On uh, Similar question. Um, you, Bill Zito was, I was shooting the breeze with him last night. He told me a hilarious story about um, when he was telling you the dress code for the team playing that you said to him, well, I'm going to still wear a suit. And he's like, no, you got to wear yeah. that. Like, when did this conform, do you think, in the NHL that everybody, like even Bill Guerin came from the Lou Lamarillo school and he wanted everybody suits, ties, and even that's changed. And I don't like it. And I don't like it because I can't pack for it. I'm still the only guy that goes out for dinner all dressed out like, like the Panther coach, right? They, I, I like a shirt and tie or a suit and shirt on travel days. It's easy to pack. I understand it. I did it for whatever it was, 25 years, and I get here. What I, so in, uh, yeah, I, I went to Russia kind of in the early teens there, and when I came back, I get hired into Winnipeg, and guys are wearing jeans on their off day. And I'm like, what is going on? What happened? In one year, the National Hockey League went to jeans on their off day. So it was casual. Boy, I'm beating this one up, but it's true. It's a shift. And then Bill's more casually dressed, so I just decided not to fight it. 